Hello listeners, Raquel and Kelly Sports Talk is back again and we are tackling the very big topic of track and field. So when we were putting our show together, what we realized is that track and field is really different from every other sport we've talked about because it's a combination of so many different events. And how do you learn about one event like discus, which of course I know nothing about discus, compared to steeplechase? And we do need to talk about steeplechase because that is an odd one. But we've got field, we've got track, we've got a lot of different things, and it's really kind of hard to put it together to learn about everything. So we're not going to be able to learn about every single event in track and field today, or this would be a seven hour episode, and nobody has the endurance for that. So we're gonna do the best that we can, as we normally do, right? We try. So we've got one coach with us today, and um, she's a good one. She's gonna bring us through this, and we're gonna learn, we're definitely gonna learn some things. And so we're really excited to have um, Ms. Lori Pernis with us. She's a track and field coach from Superior Heights. Welcome, Mrs. Pernis. Thank you. And we're going to get you to start the way we ask all of our coaches to start, which is tell us about your history in track and field, where, what led you to get into coaching, where do things stand now, and then we're going to do the best that we can to learn some things about track and field. All right. Um, I've done track and field since I was a tiny little child. Um, starting, I lived in British Columbia and we were allowed to do cross country when we were really little. And so I just had a love for the sport. So all through high school, I mean, I moved around a lot too. So, but I ended up in uh, Ontario for all of grade nine. So I competed in track and field and cross country. I'm a distance runner primarily. And so uh, went to offices and enjoyed the competition and I had uh, amazing amazing coaches who um, that's the reason why I really got into coaching They're, they were a big part of my life they made a real a real difference to me so um, I just couldn't help but want to be able to be that kind of person for the kids and to be involved and it's such a great way to get to know the kids on a whole other level like I teach math, so you know you, it's not <laughs> it's not, not always a lot of fun for kids. So it's nice to get to see them in the field, playing, you know, doing track, doing uh, cross country, doing all those things. It's a nice way to to just get to know those kids on a different level. So um, I've been coaching for all of my years of teaching, which is now 25 wow. years. Yeah, I'm old, um, <laughs> and uh, and I've coached every year except. Uh, except my first year because uh, there was some strikey stuff going on and then mm. when I was on mat leave then I didn't coach then but right. I've been coaching ever since so mm -hmm. um, I've just always loved it so that's why I'm here. Awesome so one question already about coaching I have is you can't coach every single event to track and field well there that are, would be challenging so yeah. do you have a team of coaches that help you? We do there are okay. schools that just don't have that luxury so okay. there are there are lots of coaches with multiple um, sports that they they have talent in, that they have knowledge about. So um, even at our school, we have uh, coaches who coach sprinting and can coach jumps and can coach distance running. It's just, we are blessed because we have enough coaches who want to be involved. So we have a separate throws coach and a separate jumps coach and a sprint coach and a distance coach and all that. So we're very lucky. Not mm -hmm. all schools okay. are that lucky because um, it just depends on staff participation right. and we got lots of people who want to do lots of stuff so we're very lucky but That's yeah great. like if you had asked me to coach shot put or discus uh, n no nobody no. nobody would be good at it <laughs> and people would be hurt <laughs> probably me but anyway yeah so we're uh, we're super lucky that way we've oh. got lots of talented people who know stuff that i don't okay all right, we need to start with, I think, Kelly, we need the basics as we always do. The basics are the good. Basics. Yeah. I think the basics is, what are the events? So what are track events? What are field events? And then we're going to go from there. Yeah. Okay, so we got a lengthy list. I right? know. So for track events, there are eight different track events, and that's not including uh, the relays. So we have the 100 meter, the 200 meter, the 400 meter, the 800 meter, the 1500 meter, the 3000. And uh, each of those are, um, like there's, uh, there'll be six races in each one of those because there's n novice, junior, senior, and then there's, you know, male, female. So we have, so every, every mm -hmm. event has six, at least six running, depending on if there's heats and finals, and that's a whole other thing. Um, we also have hurdles. 
Uh, the hurdles distances uh, change. There's sprint hurdles, which will be 80 meters, 100 meters, 110 meters, depending on your gender and your age group. And then there's sprint hurdles, or sorry, distance hurdles, which are the 300 meter hurdles or the 400 meter hurdles. And those again are for all the different age groups. Um, and then there's steeplechase, which is an open event, which means it's not separated into age categories. So if you're grade oh. nine and you want to do steeplechase, you have to race with the grade 12s. Um, generally, it's because there's not enough kids who are going to specialize in that to have like their own races. Um, and then we have the relays. We have the four by 100 meter relay, which is, again, there will be, um, you know, a, a relay for each age group, each um, gender. And then there's a four by 400 meter relay, which is an open, so it's just, we put all ages together and, and uh, you know, so you can have grade nines and grade 12s on your team, depending on who your fastest 400 meter runners are. So those are the track events. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have uh, field events. There are 12 different field events. Wow. Right? Wow is right, <laughs> yeah. Did I just say 12? Yeah. yeah. I'm a liar. But we didn't we know. We wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. No. You can make up any number here, Mrs. Burtis. Did I just say that? Let me try that again. There are six different field events because there are, there's long jump, triple jump, high jump uh -huh. for boys, girls. That's why I said 12 because right. okay. I went yes. six. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes. That, I'm, it's I'm a math. math. It's a, I'm a math <laughs> teacher, so math this is teacher. kind of embarrassing. <laughs> and then we have um, the throwing events. So we have shot put, discus, and javelin. Um, and so those are our field events, and those are all, again, by age, division, and, and right. gender, too. So um, so that's, I'd say that's it, like, that's it, but mm -hmm. it's not like, hey, we're playing junior basketball. And it's just and junior it's basketball. And it's just junior basketball, yeah. Yeah. and that's yeah. it. And that's why this episode is, we aren't going to be able to cover all of these things, right? And we've got athletes coming that do a lot of different things, too, so we can get some more pointers and tips, hopefully, from them as well. Um, okay, so can we just, can we talk about steeplechase? <laughs> yes. I just find this to be the most interesting thing. I mean, we all understand what the 100 meter dash is and we're pretty good, we know what a relay is and right. you know, long distance running, all of those things we mean, we, we understand, we get those. So we don't need to spend much time on those. But steeplechase is just a whole different ball game altogether. Well, it's- What is steeplechase? It's its own particular evil um, because it's- <laughs> Evil. <laughs> it's distance running. So our length for the race is 2000 meters. So so, um, but it's distance running with a super heavy giant hurdle. There's five hurdles spread out around the track, but one of those hurdles is over a water pit. And so regular hurdles, and if you've ever seen like the Olympics and people crash into the hurdles yeah. and they, you know, lots of times they hit the hurdle and they keep going cause they're fine. Yes. But if you hit this steeple, like it's like eight feet long and made with like a, you know, a six by six at the top or whatever. So if you hit that you'll just bounce back off and land on the ground so um yeah it's a special like you want to try and teach the kids to actually hurdle over them but when you don't have a big season that you know you got oodles of time to do that you kind of teach them to sort of step on top but yeah sometimes it doesn't work and they do there's some good face plants in in those yeah. not not quite as bad as one might think but when they do face plant it's not good but then there's the water pit so the water pit is um i don't really know actually how deep our water pit is i'd say it probably comes up sort of mid thigh at the very deepest but it's a it's got like an angle right. on it right so you're trying to get as far past the pit as you can to or you're not going to pass it normally not not in high school so much but you don't want to land in the deepest part okay and i mean for those of you who take pictures and or have seen the pictures in in uh, the the uh, sioux sports or or the paper or whatever um there's always some good pictures of people like just yeah. falling straight in face first or um you know they stand up on the top of the steeple and then, then just jump in and crawl their way out <laughs> ideally you want to have less resistance as possible the least amount of resistance as possible so the more water you have to crawl through the harder it is and you're already running two kilometers yeah. while doing this so it it takes a a special person I would to, agree. to want to do yeah. steeplechase. So. so where are you putting this water pit for practicing? Like well, we don't really, generally you shouldn't practice the water pit. Okay. Uh, had a student break his arm last year oh, practicing no. the water pit without my 
permission. I Uh-oh. said, pra- I said, go to the track, practice the steeples. Not, and I told them before that, don't ever practice the water. Because the water pit's not full m- most of the time because that's a serious right. liability for yeah. the city, right? So yeah. without the water in it, because it's it's lower than the ground, when you go to jump off the hurdles, there's oh. no there's nothing to lessen the impact, right? right? So right. you don't you don't want to train on the water pit. Mm-hmm. So you the best you can do is you know go over some hurdles and stuff, and then we can use the the hurdles at the John Rhodes to practice to go over because they're always out for oh, the kids okay. to practice. So they can, you know, if you use just regular hurdles at first to try and have them get over then at least if they smash into them they won't they won't hurt their faces and stuff so and are there athletes showing up first day of i guess not tryouts but the first day of track and field saying i want to do steeplechase yes there are wow uh it just because it looks crazy yeah right fair enough it's a challenge um i used to because i did a lot of track and field convening i uh i used to have this blow up alligator that i would put but like I'd blow it up by and I'd put pit. it by the water pit <laughs> just to have the kids have some like intimidation, like don't fall in, that alligator's gonna get you. So um, I'm my own kind of crazy too. I, <laughs> if I had could have done steeplechase in high school, I probably would have. Yeah. Okay. Well, hats off to those special athletes. Yeah. <laughs> steeplechase. Holy moly. Because it sounds uh, it sounds like an endurance. And two thousand meters is a big run. Well, it's yeah, it's not a short race That's for not sure. A short race. And yeah, I didn't realize it was anywhere near that long. Yeah, for sure. I don't think I did either. No, no. So my next question is about hurdles. Mm -hmm. Again, we're good with, I'm not, we're not going to cover the sprints and the relays right now and stuff, but in terms of hurdling, um, is the general technique with hurdles, because I've seen videos, of course, we all have, is the general technique with a hurdle is that you want to lead foot first. You don't leap over them the way we would normally jump over something, right? It's a very special technique. Mm -hmm. So could you try and explain I, I can envision it, but I don't know if yeah. I know how to explain it. I will never try it. Um, hurdlers will go over with what they call their lead leg. And sometimes, like, if you get a grade 9 kid, they're like, well, I don't know what my lead leg is. So right. you kind of just be like, all right, well, let's sort of, I don't know, let's run at the wall and see which foot you put up first. Like, they'll they'll kind of figure it out based on which leg seems more comfortable when they're, when they're trying to leap over something. What do they naturally leap over first? Right. And so... Ideally, what happens is, is that lead leg is so they're sprinting towards this hurdle and they've got their steps all timed out because you're, you know, you want to have either three steps in between hurdles or five steps in between hurdles. So you're always leaping with the same leg. Okay. So that leg is going to come over first. And ideally, you're not getting a lot of, let's call it hang time. Like, you know, if you watch the Olympic hurdles and you look at just their heads, their heads are like level the whole time. It's just their legs extending and the other one kicks to the side and comes out but like everything's kind of parallel to that hurdle you don't want that toe to be kicking down because that's the one that's going to hit the hurdle when it goes over like most people if they're going to hit the hurdle and they hit it with their lead leg it's not a big deal because it'll knock the whole hurdle over it's when you hit it with what's called your trail leg and your foot's down or whatever and that's the one that's going to trip you up because it's falling as you're trying to go over it or you've knocked yourself off balance because your trail legs hit it so you really want to talk like you really want to teach the kids to you know come up good with that that lead leg and get that that trail leg out to the side not tucked up underneath it's not a leap like you know if you had to leap over a curb and you right. leap, there's there, you're trying not to get a whole lot of vertical distance right, right? you really want that nice smooth horizontal and like watching olympian olympians hurdle like is is it just amazing if you literally just look at their heads you're right it's just the it all that their yeah. their legs are they're not they're not leaping they're just going over mm-hmm. right yeah. and, and so it's it's kind of a cool thing but i mean high school is a bit different because we obviously they're not olympians and like you get these kids in grade nine and you do everything you can to help them with their hurdle form and stuff a lot of it is just getting them comfortable leaping over things. Sure. Um, yeah. But then, you know, if they stick with it, by the time they're in grade 12, you hope that you've got some good form and they're not tucking their legs underneath and falling on their faces and stuff. Yeah. I can't actually watch the hurdle races because I can't stand I can't it. either. Oh. And my own child doesn't even do it. They terrify me. No, I don't want to see kids fall. No, me neither. So. No. It's terrifying to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's, that's covered some of the track ones that maybe were ones that we didn't know a lot about. Um, now field, so there's a, a jumping category to field events yep. and a throwing category to field mm-hmm. events, right? Pretty much, that's it. Yep. Okay, so I know one of them that's a, how do I explain this? 
it's very odd and looks very unnatural is the triple jump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, can you explain how you do a triple jump? I mean, I'm not awesome at triple jump, especially now because I'm 100 years old. But <laughs> um, like, they're literally it's it's the hop step and and then you've got your jump. So off that board, you're trying to get a one-legged hop, and then from there you're launching into you know a step. So you've got like. Um, you, whatever foot you're landing on after your hop, then you've, your next foot's coming right down to the step, and then you've got to propel yourself into that last jump. So it's got that long jump feel, but you've already done the hop step. So it, it does look super awkward, yes. but it's amazing when kids can do it well, yeah. and you just watch their form, and it's like that, yeah, because how do you do those motions in such a fast period of time and, and get it right and, I don't know, land in the pit, some of them... <laughs> <laughs> um, so with yeah triple jump um, no I, I, I did triple jump at one point in my life but uh, my distance running coach said no you're not doing triple <laughs> jump anymore you're a distance runner so enough of that so foolishness stick with that. yeah I, it's not that I wasn't good at it he just wanted me to be better at distance running so I'm like all right whatever are you starting from a stand no. when you do the first so you're uh, running yeah so all of all of our jumps and even high jump you start with a from a running from a run yeah and, mo and the kids have to like figure out their run up so that's if you've ever noticed that uh, even if watching any track and field on tv you'll see that there's these little little um i don't know almost like cards like little plastic things that'll have yeah. the, a number on it or whatever so those are the starting points that the the jumpers are going to be like this is where i start my run because it, you know you got to land on that tow board and if you go over the tow board then that's a fault uh, and you don't want to be too far behind the tow board because even though that still counts, you're missing some of that mm -hmm. precious distance, right? Yeah. You jump behind the tow board, that's, you know, 10 or so centimeters that you're losing out on. So they have their run-ups all figured out to the step. And then there's a, there's magic to, I think it's with, I think it's witchcraft, but <laughs> they, you know, if they go over the board by so many centimeters, their coaches are all there going with their little fingers showing how far over. Oh, okay. And then they know how to adjust their, their mark Sometimes I, I think it's not necessarily their mark. They may just have overstrided, or there's there's lots of reasons why they might miss the board. But that's what those little markers are to be like. Okay, well we're gonna. This is where I start running, and I'm gonna run. I'm gonna hit the board, and then I'm gonna jump. However it is, whether it's long jump or or triple jump, even high jump has a. They'll have a little piece of tape or whatever on the ground because they sort of they sort of circle in to the yeah. to the to the jump right. So they're like approach. I don't know. They're like cautiously approaching the uh, high jump pole just to not scare it off the thing I guess I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah you wouldn't want to make any no so the last jumping uh the last jumping one is high jump mm -hmm. and so this is one that my son did and he's on the show today he'll talk more about it but um what I noticed about high jump is that there were a few people who did not do the jump over the pole in the same way oh yeah so there were so there was two style of jumps that I saw. Now, I don't know the lingo, of course. Bear with me. Okay. So sort of the traditional one was where you would run up. And I would say like you would jump sort of backwards and you would mm -hmm. bend your back over the pole mm -hmm. and, and bring your feet up. Okay. So I would call that more traditional. But what I saw were some athletes. Okay. I'm not sure how to explain this, but I'm going to say they almost did a scissor jump. Like they didn't bend their back over their pole. They did this sort of like they just scissor, scissor kick. They scissor kick their legs over. Yeah. Yeah. So is there not a standard way you have to jump in high jump? You just have to clear the You just the have pole? to clear the pole. I mean, oh. there's there's certain that like yeah. Could you just fly over? I it? mean, you could do uh, you know, a frontwards flop if you wanted to. It's just yeah. it's you know, these techniques are sort of been proven to work the best for getting the best heights the and heights, stuff. So yeah. um uh, and of course, as technology and coaching and all these things improve, you know, shoes, all that stuff too. Like there's, there's so many things that sort of change the game with, uh, with the track and field, you know, so met, well, it used to be, they had a little bit of hay on the ground and you high jumped over that. So obviously you're, <laughs> obviously you're not, you're not clearing two meters and landing on your back with no. that one. Right. No. So, um, yeah, I think it just depends on, on what some of the athletes maybe some of the coaches are comfortable with but i'm not a high jump person so mm -hmm. i've i mean i've amateurly tried high jump just to you know just to do it but it's not uh i would have always done like the back the back over not right. i wouldn't have tried to scissor kick it like i i 
I don't know. I think you got to be something pretty impressive to be able to scissor. Like these these kids in in at Offset and High Jumper are, are going well over two meters, right? So mm-hmm. to be able to scissor kick, well, I shouldn't say well over two meters, but anyway, to be able to scissor kick over that is a, a wild thought. That's like wild. yeah. So I think I have never seen at the provincial level. I've never seen at the provincial meet somebody do the scissor oh, okay. kick method, but. Uh, that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I just right. I'm not always watching high right. jump. So, yeah, but um, but yeah, there's definitely different methods, and again, a lot of it depends on your coach and what your coach is comfortable teaching you, or what they think is going to be your best effort. I mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. All right, Kelly, do you want to ask some field questions? Or are we? I do. And the idea of getting these questions was me googling because we so, don't know. Because we don't know. But, I, I uh, might not know either. <laughs> do you know um, how heavy the shot put is? I do. Okay. <laughs> I also looked it up. No, <laughs> we have playing regs that say that, you know, because the kids can't just show up with a random shot put. Like, everything has, right. to, everything has to be weighed in. It has to be official. Javelins have to have a specific point of balance and all this kind of stuff and whatever. So um, the shot put uh, ranges for... Um, girls and boys we have for novice and junior girls so that's our grade nine and ten girls it's a three kilogram shot for novice junior boys and senior girls it's four kilograms and then for senior boys it's 5.443 kilograms which is oddly specific yeah i have a feeling it, it just be doing my math and my maybe it translates to something in pounds it probably like yes. mostly. so it anyway must. but yeah. I yeah. could be totally wrong, and it could be whatever, eleven point two seven six pounds or something. So, weird. can you so briefly explain what you do with shot put? Well, you put it, and you don't, put it. <laughs> and you, you don't throw it. But you don't throw it, and I there's, do know that. Um, there's definitely, and I don't know. I'm not a thrower, so I don't know exactly what to watch for. But I know there's technique to make sure that. Now, first of all, trying to throw, you know, an eleven pound metal ball yeah. is not going to be good for your mm-hmm. shoulders and, yeah. and elbows and things but um you are definitely more of a pushing it forward kind of thing trying to make sure your angles not downwards and not too far upwards and there's there's you know you can spin you can just straight up attack the toe board just by sidestepping so there's lots of different techniques for that but the bottom line is it has to be more of a pushing motion than right. just for no other better way to describe that than it is to actually like you're not winding up like a baseball and right. giving that a toss and, and, a, and an athlete would be disqualified if well it would take ca- someone say no that was too much of a throwing yeah so you can be in in well shot put let's just say that for sure like there's it's not disqualification it's it would be a fault so every even so jumps throws you get three attempts in the first what's called the first round so every athlete gets three attempts and so um if you do something we'll call it illegal like throwing instead of and so the officials are there watching for throws if you um like in jumping if you step over the toe board or whatever it just means they won't measure your distance they won't measure where you're they'll they'll watch your technique um with things like shot put too like there's a there's a circle that you like a cement circle pad that you Mm -hmm. have to and there's a toe board in the front and you can't step over the toe board even when you're done throwing you have to leave from the back of the circle you have to enter from the back of the circle i I think part of that safety but you know so if some some athletes will on purpose step over the toe board because they don't want their their thing measured i don't i don't know why but that's uh, that's a tech again these are things i strategies i don't get but um they so yeah so it it would be more of a fault and in your three attempts if you fault all three then you're definitely not going on to the next round right okay and so in the next round what they do is they take the top it's usually top eight so at one point in the cities we did top six but i think we're back to top eight again but they take the top eight measures so they don't add them all up or anything they just look for your high your best 
measure and then they'll say okay well you eight had the the best and so you're going to get a second round so you go for another three okay and then yeah so and again it's it's not there's no total there's no style points it's all just flat distance so it's just that would be the same for javelin discus and shot put right yeah and for all the jumping as well oh and jumping yes so there's always a second round for um for each of the field events because well i mean it's just it's you know i don't know it's I don't want to say it's harder than just getting out there and racing, but you know, you, if you do one little tiny thing wrong and your your hand slips and your shot put doesn't go more mm-hmm. than three meters or something, then you know it's nice to give you a right. second so round. So it's out of your three attempts, it's just whichever one is the longest. That's the one that counts. That's the one that they'll count for the yeah, for and the then next and then and then that's how they score the whole thing. So then they yeah. just look at the end. It's just. Uh, and they'll use all six so even if your very best throw was your first one and all the rest were less than that if that was you know they'll place you based on your very best so it doesn't matter so it doesn't matter if you threw your best in the first one or your best in the last one they just look at which one of yours was the the highest and then they'll place you based on that okay that makes sense i just have a question about the all city meet Mm -hmm. that happens down at the roads so you said everything is regulation like the shot puts and Mm -hmm. everything is each school bringing their own javelin their own shot puts so that the athletes have practiced with those or yes so what happens is is there's always a way in it's usually the night before and it'll you know whatever school's doing the has the way in marshals it'll be there at that school so everybody has to bring their implements to be weighed in okay. and once they're weighed in and uh, they'll get whatever a sticker or a mark or something on them and to say they're legal and then um, those schools can bring those implements to okay. the thing now um, the conveners are always responsible for having legal implements as well. So, oh, um, so okay. you can. What happens is, even if even at Offset, there'll be like a, a, a rolly cart that has all the discuses on it, and then it, you can use whatever discus you want. You okay. don't even have to use your own. You don't have to use the one your school brought. You could be like, ooh, that one looks fancy. I want to use that okay. one. Okay, is that right? One? Yeah. So, as, whatever implements are there you can use them so you know even so if your school had terrible shot puts that didn't pass the the way in there's always implements first of all that other kids have brought but also the conveners are always responsible for having okay so if your weights. school doesn't bring one or for yep. whatever reason it yep. breaks or yeah something. exactly okay. if your javelin falls apart yeah. there then you there's okay. there's ones yeah you're not like ha ha you're out of the competition <laughs> yeah. your javelin sucks yeah yeah no they don't do that so okay and throwers are really, well, yeah, throwers seem to be, like, really nice, and they like to share and stuff. Okay. So even if somebody's javelin did fall apart midair, I feel like another person would be like, you can use my javelin. Oh, it's I like that. Awesome Isn't sportsmanship. That nice? yeah. I love that. Huh. We're big on sportsmanship here. That's great. Um, we did have a question, too. How long is a javelin? It's surprisingly long when you actually look at yeah. the event being done. Well, I had to look that up, too, because... I don't know. I just put my hand up and go, it's taller than that. So um, I guess it's around two and a half meters. It gave like feet. So girls' javelins were seven feet, blah, blah, blah. And boys were over eight feet or whatever. So so anyway, so something like, then I looked up and it was metric. So I was like, oh, sweet, I'll use that. But so two and a half meters usually. They're long. Yeah, they are. Are they heavy? Um, No. I don't need an exact. No, I can give you an exact. I looked that up too. Um, Javelins for all the girls and novice and junior boys are 600 grams so not oh they're not heavy no, no. they're not no i would have expected them to have some weight i don't um, know why no not really and the boys uh, senior boys are 800 grams so no, not they're... not super heavy no. uh, more javelin is is you know when you if you again looking at the olympics when you see the shot putters and stuff they've got you know they're, they're bigger bodies. They've got a lot of power that way. <laughs> they're strong. Yeah, they are. They're really strong. Really and strong. But uh, javelin is a, a lot about just the technique. It doesn't. Oh. You don't have to be an absolute giant to throw the javelin. Like it, a lot of it is just you know the right technique, the right. It's all about physics, which um, <laughs> yeah, physics, you know, physics matters. Projectile yeah. motion, <laughs> stuff like that. So yeah, so it it 
it's not one of those heavy things you have to lift and you want to be super big and powerful to do that. I mean, it certainly can't help to have some power behind you. Obviously, mm-hmm, you're going to want right. that, but it, it javelin is not, it's not like, yeah, it's not your heavy lifting throwing event. It's a lot about technique. But it is the distance, right? You're not getting scored on your technique. You're not no, 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 no. No style the, points. No, okay. no, yeah. No. So everything that is um, a field event is really distance. It's a distance event. Absolutely. No matter what it is, whether you throw or you jump, right? right. Solid distance. Yep. And then anything that is a, a track event is just time? Just time, yep. Like even in hurdles, it doesn't matter if you knock over a hurdle. No, as no, long it as, doesn't. no. Oh, it doesn't matter. No, so, okay. okay, so. I actually just made that statement and I would like everyone to know I had no <laughs> idea what I was talking about. It was a fabulous, <laughs> fabulous guess. <laughs> Um, Sorry to question you. So I will say hurdles, as long as you knock them over with your feet and do not touch them with your hands. So if you were to just run down the thing, pushing the hurdles over. (laughs) Which is how I would do hurdles. That's a true disqualification, right? Now, steeplechase, you are allowed to touch steeples with your hands because they're giant things. Yes. And I I went to high school with a kid who was super short and wanted to do steeplechase, and he would not have been able to get over if he didn't put one hand down and then side flip his legs over the thing. So steeple, you're allowed to touch, but the other other hurdles you can't touch with your hands. So you could, in theory, run hurdles. You could literally knock over every single every one of them. Every single one. As long as it was with your feet and finish your race and be fine. Yep. Because it's just on time. Yep. Okay. So, you know, you, you can, uh, yeah. As, I mean, there's other ways to get disqualified in hurdles. Um, like if you were to trip over your hurdle because you knocked it over and you ended up in someone else's lane. Okay, and then yes. And then impeded yeah, that athlete. Right. right. Then, yes. But if you were in last pa- place and knocked over your hurdle and ended up in someone's lane, you're as long as you finish your race, you're probably not going to be disqualified. You could be, but if you don't impede anyone else, then you're fine. So knocking over the hurdles, you could, yeah, as long as it doesn't interfere. But like... If you knock over a hurdle and it flies up into someone else's lane and you personally didn't interfere with that person, it's just an act of God. And the person who gets interfered with by the flying hurdle, that's just, sorry. Hurdles are a wild show. I'm not, I don't even like watching them. No. So there's, there's nothing though that would stop a race. Like... No, uh, no, but he's blowing a whistle to stop a race or not, not in a, not in a hurdle or, sp- I mean, the only time you in a sprint race or whatever that you're ever going to stop it is if there's false starts. You right. Know, you right. Hit, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and in, uh, but no, like you're not, oh wait, okay. everybody go back. Yeah. I was convening. It was one of my very first early years of convening, like, like my, my first or second year of convening track and field. And it was windy and our city had terrible hurdles that weren't very heavy didn't have weights and stuff and they 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 were trying to start the races and the hurdles would just keep blowing over and blowing over so there was a picture of me in the paper i wish i had it i am (laughs) standing across a row of hurdles like a starfish reaching out (laughs) as far as i can waiting for that gun to go so that if any of them blew over i was going to stack them back up and then i had to dash off the track to to make sure i didn't get run over yeah, I would like to see that. Picture. Yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty yeah. stellar. Well, and we didn't have enough. Like there were weights for the for the hurdle legs because they had these little, little short legs, which are terrible. That's a terrible idea. Um, we ran out of weights, so oh. literally we're grabbing giant rocks out of the oh, John Lord. Rhodes parking lot to put down on these. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty we have hard. better oh, hurdles dear. now. Yeah. yeah, we have much better hurdles now. Well, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to stand across yeah. a row of No, hurdles. I don't want no, you to have do to. Not. <laughs> no. So, Mrs. Burns, we're out of time. Oh my gosh. I know. It and happens we just every time. For like 30 minutes. I, I thought I could be here for days. I didn't I didn't know <laughs> this, we had to cut this there off. There is so many. We never really even talked about discus, no. right? Like, there's just so many things. But we are out of time. Okay. Well, so, it was nice chatting with you. Learn, we actually did learn <laughs> We some learned things. a lot. We learned some things, for sure. And we're very grateful uh, that you joined us. Well, hopefully the kids will have... So you can ask the kids about discus. Absolutely, because yeah. we, do have, we do have a field athlete coming in. She nice. does all the throwing. So she Beautiful. can give us some, a little, some yeah. details on it. I, yeah. I just know. I just keep telling the kids to just keep turning left. And keep turning <laughs> left. They'll okay. be fine. That's all, right. that's all distance runners got to do. Perfect. You're actually right, I think about that, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and, you for having um, me. 
have a great track and field season because well, it just started. It, like just yeah, everyone's like coming together. Just, just started. Just started. Yeah. 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 And the city meet is May the twenty third oh. for people who uh, might want to get out and yeah. Uh, I'm gonna watch, write that down. May twenty third, city meet. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks okay. so much. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Right. Bye. 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 And we're back with this week's episode of track and field and we are joined with three awesome athletes we've got emma walker from st mary's max shillingford from superior heights and brayden richard from superior heights as well and we're going to do what we've done every other show and we're going to pass the mic over to our athletes to let them introduce themselves talk a little bit about your history with the sports and the events and let us know a little bit about yourself uh-huh. I'm Max Schellingford. I go to Superior Heights and I started doing track and field in grade 10 because I went to the meeting originally because me and my friends didn't have anything to do at lunch. So we just went to the meeting and thought it looked fun. Then we actually did and we all really enjoyed it. So I did high jump, triple jump, 100 meter, and then I was also on the relay team. Hi, I'm Braden Richard. I go to Superior Heights and I started track because I did it in elementary school and I really liked it and I wanted to be more of a multi-sport athlete, so I did track and field in high school, too. Hi, I'm Emma Walker, and I go to St. Mary's. I started track and field in grade 9 and do all the throwing events. I started because me and my friends wanted to try something new other than wrestling. Okay, so when you say all the throwing events, that would be? Discus, javelin, and shot put. Okay, so we've got a thrower. Is that what we call you? Yeah. You're a thrower? Yeah. You're a thrower. Okay, so we got our thrower. <laughs> we've got a jumper. Right with Max, and then we and then, but you did high jump as well, Brayden. Yeah, you did, and running. Okay, so we've got pretty much we're covered. We're covered, except we have no hurdles and, and no, no steeple steeple chase. chase. I'm fascinated with this steeple chase. Anybody but. willing to try it? No, the heads are shaking now. <laughs> Brayden had a moment. I think Brayden might say yes. Perhaps. Perhaps oh. we have a perhaps. I like perhaps. that. Perhaps. Okay. okay, I like it. So uh, let's jump right in. Let's talk about what training looks like. Uh, we'll start with you, Emma, with the throwing. Um, so I train with my coaches three days a week, usually like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because you don't want to overthrow your right. arm. Um, but we do have the option to take home equipment and throw on the weekends by ourselves, as well as I'm in the gym quite a bit, just working on my strength and explosiveness. Okay. Explosiveness. I like that. I like that word. I like that word a lot. Okay. So either Max or Brayden, who wants to go next? Tell us about what, and if you want to just choose one event to focus on in this conversation, that's okay too, because you, you, everybody kind of did more than one. Um, what does training look like? Um, for running, we start with our warm up with A, B's and C's with uh, either Noah or Miss Sigmund. And um, then after that, we get to our uh, form. We do our uh, lunges and stuff too, just to get like really warmed up. And I usually also do like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And when I did high jump, it would be Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, just to kind of separate it and just do some new things and just um, not get bored of the training. Because we did the same thing every day, we'd probably just get like a little bit tired of it. So just change it up and stuff. And it was, yeah, it's good. What is ABCs? Yeah. Um, ABs and Cs is like practicing your form. So like first you'll like start really technical and it'll be looser. And then the Cs is really loose with just going really fast. Just like uh, just keep uh, practicing your form, pretty much. Okay, so would there be some times when you would run slower to work on form, and then other times where you would run to just be like, let's go as absolute fast as you can? Yeah, like if we're trying to practice our starts, we literally oh. just we literally just run, and after we just walk it out. And then if we're trying to practice on like just our form while we're running, we'll go slow first, and then we'll just go fast the rest of the hundred meter. Okay, okay, and Max, high jump training is. I think two days a week, it was Tuesdays and Thursdays. It would be a lot of plyometrics, a few isometrics, stretching, and then just high jumping and getting over the bar. Okay. So pro- this is, it's challenging because what we found with track and field is that no one's talking about one sport. Like when you talk about basketball, we're just talking about basketball, but we're all talking about different things. So what would be the most challenging thing for your event or you can group events together what would be the most challenging thing would it be learning proper techniques would it be building up strength like what would it be and anyone we can all answer this because you all actually have different different events to talk about for high jump and triple jump it's definitely getting the form down is really really hard to do and then the 
both jumping events give you really bad ankle pain, so pushing oh. through that and be able to do them is really difficult and probably the hardest part of it all, honestly. Mm -hmm. And for you with high jump, how hard was it to learn the proper um, technique? For it's me. not it's not a natural thing that we do, right? The no. way that we high, you high jump and arc your back over the bar and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, how hard was it? For me, it was really hard because I tend to jump off two feet, and you can oh. in high jump you can only jump off one. So that was really hard for me. Then bending over the bar was really hard for me, and not trying to jump it like I would jump a fence or something was really difficult. Right. So if you were to jump on two feet, that you are disqualified. You're not disqualified, right. but oh. your jump won't count. Oh, your jump won't count. Okay. Right, because you don't get disqualified. You get three tries. Faults. Yeah. Faults. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay. But it has you have to go off one foot. Does it matter which foot? It's always the outside foot to the bar that you jump off with. Okay. So would they stop you from jumping or would you jump just wouldn't count? They would jump then after they would like throw up a red flag and say you got oh, a okay. fault. Hmm. Okay. Okay, anyone else? What is the most challenging thing about um, about your event? Definitely the starts for 100 meter because okay. it's real like they procrastinate a lot. They'll say runners on your mark, wait like five seconds, and then they'll say get set. You stay there for like 10 seconds and you got to go. So you really can't like um, prepare mentally for it. You just got to keep preparing, preparing, preparing. Um, and then when they go, it's just like a shock. Like it's just complete, just boom. You know what I mean? And false starts happen a lot. Yeah. So what what is a false start? Um, if it's basically when you go before it, um, the gun goes. You can either get two, but um, it goes as kind of a group thing. So it's not individually. If you get one, you can't go again. Um, if somebody does it and then you get one, you're disqualified from the race. Oh, okay. They're very strict about it, yeah. Okay. So that's a very um, important thing to pay attention to, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Emma, in the throwing, whichever one you want to talk about or whatever, what is the most challenging thing about it? Um, definitely the technique because okay. it's such unnatural movement mm, that yes. a lot of people struggle to do it uh -huh. that way. Especially I found with shot put for me, like you, it's just natural to want to throw right, to right. the ball, but it's heavy and you'll hurt your elbow and your shoulder and then you have to push it more than throw it. So that was hard for me. Okay, and one of the things we didn't get to talk about with Mrs. Pernis, our coach, really at all was discus. So, Emma, could you give us like a very quick run through about how you throw a discus? It's not a frisbee. <laughs> no. So, it's you want to have your hand over it with kind of your last three fingers just gripping it slightly. And then you wind back. You stand, so you're in a circle just like shot put. Okay. And you want to stand at the back facing away from where you're throwing. And then you do one full spin and your arm kind of trails behind and you want your arm to shoot up at like a 45 degree angle into the air and then have it kind of fly through the air like that. Okay. Do you flick your wrist no. at all with it? You don't. You keep it straight. You keep it straight, right? Okay. Yeah. And when do you let go? It kind of comes out more naturally. Okay. We call it our trigger finger. It's kind of our middle finger, at least for me. And you flick it a little bit, just that finger, to kind of help with the release, that okay. it spins nicely and moves through the air. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Who knew? No, well, we didn't know, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> oh, okay, so we've discovered that you're all multi-sport athletes. Um, do you find that there's any of the other sports that you participate in that help you with your track and field events? The discipline aspect of going to practice five times a week. Perfect. Um, yeah. Because my coach, Coach George, uh, really pushes us at practice, always doing stuff I don't want to do, like running. I don't like running. And this so, is for basketball. Yeah. yeah. So whenever we have track and all we do is running, I'm kind of just already used to and just like used to the conditioning and just listening to your coach. Anyone else? That's a good point, Max. For me, the running and jumping of basketball and football really translated. So I was already, I had good leg strength and good mobility. So I was already good at jumping from those sports. So that really helped me getting into it. Okay. Good point. Um, I would say with wrestling, the, it helped me a lot with my strength mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. throwing events, as well as like the mental aspect, because wrestling is very tough on kids mentally. So I think I was able to carry that over into my throwing and help me focus a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, 
So in any of your sports, this doesn't need to just be for, for track or for field, but it could be. Do you get anxious before you compete? And if you do, what do you do when you get like jitters? And also, do you have any superstitions that you need to do before an event? So Max, I'm gonna get you to start because I remember, for those of you that don't know, Max is my son. But we were chatting about this and you said the worst pregame jitters you ever felt was before running track. Yeah, I get them in football. I almost never get them in basketball. If it's a big game, sometimes I'll be nervous, but there is nothing to me that's more nerve-wracking in my life than running a 100-meter sprint in front of a lot of people. It's like, it happens to a lot of people. It's pretty common, like people are throwing up before their races. For me, it's not that bad, but it really is nerve-wracking. And no, I don't really have any superstitions. I like to listen to music before I do stuff and not talk to people, but that's really it. Okay. Um, but what do you do when you get nervous? Just, uh, is there anything you mentally do? Just let, the, let it drive you? Yeah, tell myself I'm fine. Then not really do anything. Listen to music. Don't talk to people. Like, I don't do anything outrageous. Some people, like, they always have these socks they wear and stuff right. like that. But and we've learned a that's lot about me. athletes have special food. They, they, yeah. they have a lot of food yes. rituals, food routines that they need to eat before any game. But you don't have any anything like that. I try not to eat like junk food and really bad food, especially before track. Yeah, I just think it. Feel like, I feel like it makes me like play worse. I have bad food in my body, but I can also say that you you tend not to eat a lot before. No, I never do. Okay. Eating a lot before games like yeah. that just makes me want to throw up. So I tr always try to eat like enough to give me energy, but not enough that I feel sick and disgusting. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Pre-game jitters? Yeah, I get really nervous before games and just races, especially, yeah, especially races. But like Wax said, I don't really eat that much before games. I have like a banana maybe or something just for like for the carbs and stuff. But um, one of my superstitions actually I do before every race, relay, 100 meter or whatever, when I get set up into the blocks, I shake my legs a little bit just to like get the jitters out a bit. It yeah. makes me feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, just getting ready, putting my fingers behind the line, getting all set up. I kind of get in the zone, you know what I mean? Right. It's just kind of like a routine I can't, I've been having since practice so with Miss Sigmund outside to uh -huh. competing at NASA. Mm -hmm. So when you physically get your body ready, it helps you mentally get ready. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe even some breathing too, but like mainly like doing the physical stuff helps me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Emma, what about you? Um, I don't really have any superstitions, but I do get nervous uh -huh. quite a bit. Yeah. But I try and follow the same routine leading mm -hmm. up to each competition, no matter what the sport is. You know, just have everything prepared and ready, and I like to listen to my music to focus before I have to go compete. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do remember being at the city track meet. Maybe the and I was actually at the NASA one as well, and I do remember hearing a lot about the nerves before um, the running events. Do you think because that's such a single sport, like you're not on a team? Yeah, it, because yeah. you only get one chance. To yeah. Maybe? It's kind of both. It's like, say in basketball, there's always a chance, like, oh, I'll have a great game, I'll shoot good. In track, like, you know how fast you are, you know what you're going to do. So, especially in race, where there's people that you've, like, you've been hearing about them being really fast. Right. That can be really nerve-wracking because it's such, all the attention is on you and you're just by yourself. So, it is pretty nerve-wracking. So, I actually want to follow that up. And because I don't remember, as much as I was at the city meet watching, <laughs> and I did go to NASA. So something like the 100 meter dash, for example, you only get one try, right? Whereas like Emma, in your field events, you get three throws every round, right? Yes. So if you do mess up one, it's okay. You have two more to count on, Yeah. right? So maybe part of it is with the running is the fact that yes, everyone's watching, Yeah. but it's also the, the thought too that it, it's just this. One and done. It's just one and done, yeah. That could be one of the big reasons why it's so nerve-wracking. Yeah, yeah that, sure. that's definitely a factor. Yeah. So let's talk about relay for a minute because we didn't really talk a lot about the running things with Mrs. Pernis. Um, both you, Max, and Braden were part of the, the relay team for Superior Heights. Um, what Talk to us about the baton. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, the baton and passing the baton. We, we get the running part. Yeah. <laughs> you need to run fast. But the baton passing is very specific. Right? So tell us about that. Um, you have, there's like a code word. It's, a, it's usually a two letter word, or sorry, a two. Syllable? Yeah, syllable word. 
and uh, you'll say it. And after that, like when the beginning starts, he'll start running. And then when you say the other part, that's when you're gonna hand the baton, right? Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So like for example, it'd be like orange juice would be a word right. that we'd use, right? And uh, when we say orange, he'd run. And after when I say juice, he'd extend his arm because when you're extending your arm, you're getting rid of a lot of speed, right? So you have to pass it to him and make it really quick. So then yes. you can get as many seconds as you can. So in your training for relay, did you spend a lot of time working on how to pass the baton? Kind of because um, everyone was trained, but then our fourth runner got injured and our backup runner wasn't there. So our buddy, Will Mada, I just had to, well. we never taught him anything. He just came, he's like, yeah, I'll do it. And at first, Miss Sigmund, our, tra our 100 meter coach, didn't want that to happen. But then we just asked a different coach. He said, yeah, so we just brought him on. And he did great. Uh, we got second place in the city. And yeah. for him not knowing what he was doing, he did very well. And you guys had to like emergency, like work on passing the baton. Yeah. Like that, not the running. Will knew how to run, right? Yes. But it was very much the baton. But isn't there also, and again, I don't know the right words. Isn't there also like a pass, I'm going to call it a passing zone. But isn't there something on the, on the track where you have to start this process within this point and it has to be passed to the next person within this point? Like it's not just anywhere. It's very specific that this can happen, right? Yeah, it's between the thumb and the index finger usually. Brayden, I'm, I'm going to take says, the question over for Brayden the there. Yeah. <laughs> there. I know what you're saying. You're talking about the physical pass from <laughs> hand to hand. I get that. I'm talking about the markings on the track. Yeah, there's these usually yellow lines on the track and the first there's three of them on the track in total and they're on the corners. So there's this the start of the yellow line, the relay runner has to be past that and they can't start earlier or so you get disqualified. Uh -huh. Then at the second yellow line, they have the baton has to be handed off by the end of that zone or else you will get disqualified. And correct me if I'm not wrong, I think there was a team at NASA, a girls team, that did get disqualified because they didn't get it passed within mm. the zone. But they didn't know. Yeah. Right? And they ran the whole race and didn't know and did really, really well. Oh. And then found out at the end that they were disqualified. Yeah, that did happen in NASA. It's pretty yeah. common. It's common. Yeah, yeah, we almost got disqqualified for that too. And I had mm -hmm. to yell to our fourth runner, Will Sayers. I had to yell at him to slow down because oh, I wasn't going to make it. Because you were going to make it. Yeah. So that's a big part of, of relay for sure. Yeah. Okay, Kelly, what do you got for them? I just want to ask a question that kind of goes along with our question on here. What was it like competing at NASA for your event? But when we've talked to other athletes with different sports, they've talked about um, athletes uh, performing differently, like from Southern Ontario or from bigger venues. Are you noticing that at OFSA or NASA and OFSA that there's a difference in the quality maybe or the um, sportsmanship? of the athletes coming to those events? Yeah, I really noticed that the sprinters from Sudbury, they're a little faster than us, but it's nothing ridiculous. But jumping, the jumpers, especially in NASA, the skill level is like massive from here to there. Just to Sudbury? Yeah, okay. like oh. for, for triple jump, usually I got third and I jumped eight meters something. Third place in Sudbury was jumping 10 meters or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. it's a massive difference. Then, especially in high jump, they're jumping like 40 centimeters higher than us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. So, Emma, do you find that when you go on and compete at NASA or OFSA? I don't Have you made it to OFSA? I have not. Okay. So, I don't, no, nobody here has made it to OFSA. Actually, I don't know if we had, we didn't have that many athletes that no. made it to OFSA. Um, but you did go to NASA? Yes. Correct. Okay. So, did you find that? Where, what was the competition level like? Um... I, it was better than in the city, for sure. Uh -huh. um, it was a very hot day, though, at NASA last time I went. And throwing events can take, like, two hours oh. sometimes. Oh. Wow. So I would say the quality from, like, the Sioux and from Sudbury kind of went down by the end of the day mm -hmm. just because everyone was yeah. so hot and tired. And, mm -hmm. But I would say, like, overall, 100%, there's a little bit. It's just more competitive right. with right. better athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was a fun day, but it was a hot day. Yes. It was a very hot day. So track and field tryouts just started. Just started, I think. Just started too. Yeah. this week. 
I don't know if they're really tryouts because it sounds like if anybody really wants a spot, I think they can find something that they enjoy doing. So what are your plans for the upcoming track and field season? Um, I will be doing the 100 meter sprint again, but instead of doing high jump this year, I'm thinking more of a throwing event because I just want to, I didn't, I wanted to try it last year, but I ended up doing high jump just because um, the coach wanted me back because um, I did in grade, grade nine, but I did not compete because I was on a tournament basketball team. They, didn't, they wanted me uh, putting more of my focus on that. But I actually did, I do like track and field or high jump and I want to try it. But this year I want to try doing some uh, throwing because I want to get to know the coach a little bit more and just try something new, you know, just, mm -hmm. I don't plan yeah. on doing this after high school, might as well just have fun with it. Exactly. That's so when you say point. throwing, is there a specific one that you're like, I'd like to try that? Yeah, a javelin. It was javelin? It, it, made, it was really interesting to me. I was just seeing uh, like Dave Goche do it and stuff last year and I, I just thought it was interesting. I just want to try it out myself. Uh-huh. Okay, but you're going to stick with the running? Yeah, for sure. Because you're fast. You're a fast runner. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Max, what are you going to, what's your track and field season going to look like? I'm definitely doing relay if I can. I don't really want to compete in 100 meters. I'm moving up a division and I'm not incredibly fast, so I don't think I'd do well in it. So I'm not too worried about that. And then high jump. I did well in high jump last year, but our old high jump coach, Mr. Holmes, unfortunately passed away. So we currently don't have a high jump coach. So I don't know if there will be high jump at Superior Heights oh this year. Goodness. And oh. you were the city championship in your division. You won cities in your division last year. Yeah. 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 Now what about the triple jump, Max? I am not doing triple jump. <laughs> and I'm staying away from all of that, actually. Yeah. I did triple jump, and it was one of the biggest mistakes I made that season. <laughs> It yeah. just destroyed my ankles. I didn't even, I went to two high jump practices all year, two triple jump practices all year. So I had no clue what I was doing and it was not a fun experience and I don't right. plan on doing it again. Yeah, but you know what? You tried it, Yeah. right? You don't know until you try. That's right. You tried it. Yeah. But hopefully, hopefully high jump and, uh, and the 100 meter relay. And Emma, what about you? I'll be sticking to my throwing yeah. events. My shot put and discus and javelin. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of where I like to stick to. Uh-huh. Okay. That's perfect. You don't need to try anything else. No. All right. So I think it's time we end with some shout outs. I agree. This yeah. is part of our show where it's we like our, our athletes to give a shout out to anybody who has supported you in your athletic journey. Um, and it can be anyone, coaches, teammates, parents, grandparents, and any sport, because you're all any, sport athletes. Yeah, and you all play a lot of sports, so uh, I'm not sure who's going first. Braden, you're right beside me. Yeah, I can go first. Um, number one, I have to give my first shout out to my parents. They support me in every decision I make, go to every game, go to every racing event I have, everything I do, they're always there for me, and I, I couldn't do it without their incredible support. Uh, my second shout is going to be my beautiful girlfriend, Jade. She's helped me along the way. Um, we've been dating for around two years now. And throughout high school sports, she's supported every game. She's been everywhere for me. And uh, she does a lot of things I can't believe I have her in my life. And my last shout out I want to give to is my old uh, high jump coach, Mr. Holmes, who unfortunately did pass away last year. Um, he was very patient and he got me to being an incredible high jump jumper. Um, I came into the sport not even knowing high jump was a thing. And uh, he made me enjoy it a lot, so I couldn't have done it without him. He's an incredible man, and I'm going to miss our stories together when uh, I went to practice with him. Yeah, he's, uh, he certainly has worked with a huge number of athletes across New St. Marie for a long period of time. So Mr. Holmes is definitely going to be missed. All right, Max? Yeah, I have a few. So first, my basketball coach, Ryan Lillington, who is a phenomenal coach, and I wish nothing but the best for him. He taught me a lot about basketball and did give me a lot of opportunities. Then my other basketball coach, Coach EJ, who moved away, but it was for a good reason and I really do miss him. Then for football, Coach DeSando, who's the football coach who I really do like, and he got me back into football and I'm really grateful for that. Then the wide receiver coach, Coach Jimmy White, he's, he's just a beauty. Then. My sprinting coach, Miss Sigmund, who taught me sprinting, and I really appreciate that. Miss Pernis, the head track coach at our school. My mom and parents, of course. My grandparents, of course, for supporting me. Um, then Mr. Hales, who also was a football coach of mine and who got me into football. Then 
then George Shackleton, my current basketball coach, who, when I ran through a window, helped me a lot. And I really do appreciate the things I've learned Big from shout him. out to George. Big shout out to George. <laughs> and our basketball team manager, Gracie Wright, who did a lot of work for the basketball team, which did go unnoted, and we all do appreciate. Thanks, Gracie. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Gracie. All right, Emma, your shout outs. Um, definitely my family. They've been super supportive through all my many athletic endeavors, um, all my numerous wrestling coaches, especially the Campioni family, and of course my throwing coaches from St. Mary's, Mr. Korab, Dono, and Johnny. Nice. 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 All right, it has been an absolute pleasure having the three of you join us and uh, teaching us a little bit more about your track and field events and sharing with us. We really appreciate it. And on that note, we're wrapping up this episode. Track and field is done. Best of luck in this upcoming season. Yeah, and we only have one episode left. One. Stay tuned because it's going to be a big one. It is. All right. Bye, everybody.